Hello, how are you? Welcome to our lesson today. Yeah, today we shall learn about growth and development in animals. Growth and development in animals. Now, um, growth and development usually is produce is brought, brought about by some cells. Cells that will uh, that usually de uh, divide by mitosis or mitotically. This will lead to increase in number of cells, hence increasing in size of an organism. Now, the difference between growth and development in plants and that in animals is that the cells that grow or that divide mitotically in animals are not localized, meaning they are not found within a certain point only. For instance, in plants, uh, the cells that are capable of dividing are only found in the meristems. So, Cells or cell division in animals is not localized to some regions as in plants. Also, in most animals, growth stops when they reach adulthood. While in some, in some organisms, growth may continue throughout their life. Okay? So, in case there is growth throughout the life of an animal, that type of growth is known as continuous growth. On the other hand, in arthropods, they show rapid growth immediately after molting, as we learned under intermittent um, growth curve. So in arthropods, they show rapid growth immediately after molting, um, followed by a long period in which growth is not observed. So this type of uh, growth is called discontinuous growth. So with discontinuous growth is actually a type of growth where um, the growth is observed at some time, then it stops for some time, and then continues to, uh, to grow after molting, and then it stops again that, like that. It repeats over and over again. While continuous growth is a situation where plants grow continuously throughout the life of the organism. Now, uh, most animals usually show sexual reproduction whereby male and female gametes fuse to form the zygote. Okay? However, in some insects, in some insects, they usually lay unfertilized eggs. So the eggs originate from one parent, unfertilized eggs, in which they hatch into adult. And this type of sexual reproduction is referred to as parthenogenesis. Patheno Genesis. So pathogenesis refers to um, the production of offspring eh, without fertilization. Okay? Good. Now, let us talk about uh, growth and development in insects. Now, here we have to talk about uh, metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. It's a very uh, good terminology which you should actually know. So what is metamorphosis? You might have actually observed that uh, insects usually grow in stages. They may start with the egg, then the egg hatches to larva, then the larva develops into pupa, and then it forms an adult. So the change in form during which structural changes occur is what is, what, is, what is known as metamorphosis. So metamorphosis, we have said, refers to um, the change in form during which there is changes in structure and function of the body of an organism throughout its life cycle is what is called metamorphosis. Now, what is the significance of metamorphosis? So metamorphosis prepares organisms for life in different habitats. It prepares organisms in life for different habitats. So it occurs in insects, crustaceans, uh, mollusks, um, and also amphibians. They all show um, metamorphosis. Okay? Now, we have two types of metamorphosis. We have complete metamorphosis and incomplete. So here, uh, it is written complete and complete, but it's supposed to be complete and incomplete metamorphosis, as we shall see next. We shall begin with complete metamorphosis. Now, in complete metamorphosis, the organisms usually um, the organisms usually move through all the four stages of development. 
that is it moves through uh, the egg through the egg then to, to larva then to pupa and then finally to adult so we are saying that um, complete metamorphosis also known as holometabolus development holo metabolus development is the radical changes in the body during the life cycle on an organism in which the organism passes through egg larva pupa and adult or imago stages so we are saying that it is a type of development in which uh, the organisms move through egg larva pupa and adult okay it occurs in animals such as butterflies, moths, wasps, flies, and bees. Okay. Now, what is the significance of each of the four stages in uh, complete metamorphosis? So we shall investigate all the four stages. We shall start with the larva stage. So larva stage is the feeding stage. In most cases, Lava or larval stage re resembles it resembles the it resembles the what the the, the caterpillars eh? so we're saying larval stages actually is the feeding stage this is where feeding takes place larvas are quite different from adult in most cases they resemble the caterpillars eh? they are the caterpillars indeed. Eh? Then the larva sheds its exoskeleton several times. It molds several times and leads to formation of a pupa. Also, it is a dispersal stage. So at that particular stage, now the, the, larva, the larvae will spread all through. Hence, it is a dispersal stage. This will um, avoid or prevent overcrowding. Then we go to pupa. Pupa is usually enclosed in a case known as puparium or a cocoon. Puparium or a cocoon. So at that particular point, there is no feeding and it is a stage for organ formation. There is actually organs. Organs form. Then the pupa leads to, to, to formation of an adult. So this emerges from the puparium and it is the reproductive stage or reproductive cycle where the, the mature organisms now will reproduce. Let us go back and observe the life cycle again. We have said in complete metamorphosis uh, the organisms passes through the egg as, as, uh, as observed here. Egg, then larva, Lava, then, uh, uh, sorry, then, then pupa, and then finally adult. Okay? So we have said that the larva stage actually is the feeding stage where the organisms feed. And also it is the, the dispersal stage where the organisms spread, hence preventing overcrowding. Then the pupa, on the other hand, here, actually that one is usually enclosed by a cocoon or a pauparium so that is where now organs form like the wings the legs eyes etc they form during the pupa stage then the pupa will lead to the it will emerge now to an adult like here so this is the, the the reproductive stage where now the organism will be able to reproduce to form new new ones or new forms is it clear so those are the significance of the various stages of development. Now, let us now go to um, incomplete metamorphosis. Now, incomplete metamorphosis is also called hemimetabolous development. Hemimetabolous development. This is a type of development whereby the organisms passes through, um, passes through the egg, nymph, adult, meaning that it passes through only three stages. Okay? So the egg usually hatches to a nymph. And the nymph resembles the adult. 
but they are usually sexually immature. If you look keenly on this particular diagram here, we shall be able to notice that the egg, this one here, uh, uh, hatches to a nymph, this one here. The nymph resembles the adult, but the only difference is that it is sexually immature. Is it clear? So, we are saying that the developmental stages are the egg leading to, to, to it, it hatches to a nymph and then into adult. Is it clear? Now, a nymph molts several times. A nymph, a nymph usually molts several times. What, what is the meaning of that molts? It sheds its exoskeleton several times. Okay? Several times. Uh, before it becomes an adult and and the stage of development between one molt and another like like if it molts now and then it molts after maybe two weeks that particular period between one molt and another is what is called an insta is what is called an insta so it is a uh, observable or most common in locusts and cockroaches so hemimetabolous development or incomplete metamorphosis is very common in um, uh, cockroaches and locusts okay thank you very much let us now uh, wrap up our discussion by discussing the advantages of metamorphosis in the life of an insect now Metamorphosis has got a number of advantages to this insect. One, the adult and the larvae explore different niches. Therefore, we don't expect to have a, a competition whatsoever in, in, in the ecosystem. Number two, they do not compete for food. Number three, pupa. The pupa can survive adverse conditions. And lastly, it allows dispersal, hence preventing overcrowding. So far so good. We shall stop there for today. God willing, we shall embark in our next uh, uh, discussion. Bye-bye. See you.